And so we are recording this Pear Deck session, which is great because sometimes things happen. My internet could completely crash, your internet could crash. So if something happens and you're not able to stay for the whole time, you will be able to get um, to get the information. Another nice piece of news, since I know I have a lot of you who've been joining me this whole week off and on, um, because I do have a pro license of Zoom, we found out a couple days ago, well, Jen, my TOSA found out two days ago, I figured it out yesterday and started using it. We actually have a really robust reporting feature in Zoom that includes your names, what and how long you spent in the rooms for each session, each session I do. So that means we don't need to type our names in the chat anymore and I don't need to send you a Google form or anything because Zoom is going to create, it creates a beautiful report that gives me all your names and tells yay. me that you are in the room. Huh? I said, yay. Yeah, isn't that awesome? It's actually, I was so excited. Now, you may still find, depending on the trainings you attend as the teams come back to work next week, um, I had bought a license for Zoom. Every once in a while, this light isn't right. Um, I had bought a license for Zoom for the team I work with in professional learning and curriculum innovation over a year ago. Um, but many of the other people who are providing trainings, they don't have this professional license. They're also using the same license you are through the district, and that license does not include reporting. So you may be in some trainings where you will still be asked to type something in the chat or do something to verify your attendance because they don't have a reporting feature. Um, but for me, we're all good. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about the reporting feature because you are all covered. You're on the report. Um, all right. So as always, we're going to start by sharing with you the resource document. Welcome. We've got a nice group in here this morning. Um, we're going to start by sharing the resource document. And that's not what I was going to do. Uh, I'm going to put that in the chat for you. Interesting. Oh, hold on. Oh, no. Well, this is going to be a challenge. Apparently, when I was training in Zoom yesterday, I was demonstrating something and I turned off the chat. Let me see if I do have allow participants to chat, but I don't, I don't have chat. <laughs> okay. Great chat, we're using it right now. Oh, there it is, sorry. Oh my gosh, it moved to the other side of my share screen button. So of course I got completely discombobulated. All right, <laughs> for some reason, instead of being on the right of my share screen button, it's now on the left and therefore I could not see it and it became invisible. So what I have put, what I've put in the um, chat is the resource document for using Pear Deck. And to answer the question, I, you might have already heard me say this, but, um, but we do have, you do not have access to the reporting feature in the free version of Zoom. So you, unfortunately, it won't allow you to take attendance, for example, as to which students were there. You'll be dependent on looking at your participant list or asking them to type their name in the chat so that you can get the chat file afterwards. Um, um, it's not part of the free version. All right. Um, oh, good. So in your reports tab, I'm not sure. Oh, maybe you do. We didn't think because some, I had my TOSA ask one of the other TOSAs who doesn't have a pro version of Zoom if she could get a report that gave the information we see, which includes the participants' names and then how much time they spent in the room. And that particular TOSA had said no she wasn't able to get the report. That was um, me. So that was that, me and okay. I have a basic version and I couldn't I don't I didn't see it on mine. Okay so it unless looks it like just is now new. Maybe. Um, it looks like Raquel is saying yeah I do. I have the basic one too and yeah. I was able to pull a basic um, a report. You just go to the zoom.us uh -huh. um, the website and on the right there's a tab for reports and I was able to see the participants and how long they were in the room oh, good. also. Oh, well, that's great news. Okay. Well, I'll let um, Jenny go ahead and feel free and try that out sometime because it might be there for you. Um, it will have all the, everything you've run over the past several days. That'd be awesome. I'll check it. Thanks. Yeah, right. That is going to be awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, good news. This is us all learning together. All right. So we're going to get started um, with our session and I'm going to start sharing my screen now. And as you know, I have put a resource document in the chat and this document tells you a little bit about what Pear Deck is because it's a little bit special. This is not, not something I would call a basic tool that everybody has to use. Um, but for teachers who are designing their own lessons that they're you know, using something like Google Slides, 
that they are putting um, out for their students. This allows us to do something that's really critical to all um, to all instructional experiences, which is provide learners with opportunities to pause, check their understanding, and you know get a little bit of feedback as to whether or not they're doing okay. Um, but that feedback in this case is going to come probably from you individually to students after you get a chance to review their their answers. But rather than presenting an entire lesson all together, kind of all at once, and then having them do all the practice, a tool like Pear Deck allows you to break your lesson into chunks and build in some checks for understanding and processing activities that students can do along the way so that their brain has that very much needed time to kind of hang on to and process that first bit of information, try it out a little bit, get a little confidence in it before their brain has to take in some more information on that topic to you know do those building blocks that are building up to whatever your lesson target is. Um, so this is this is a really great tool. It is an it is an extra tool. So it's something that you will use in conjunction with Google Slides. And in order to do that, you do need some basic operational comfort with Google Slides. How to start a slide deck, how to add, you know, how to type content onto that slide deck at a minimum. Okay. So this resource document um, does show you, give you the direct link to get temporary free access to the full paid version, which you will want because of course the best interactive slides that the students can work with are in the, are in the paid version, not in the free version. So you do wanna go ahead and get that temporary free access to the full version. So you have access to those really powerful slides. And then it kind of walks you through a little bit of what you'll need to do on a text-based step-by-step level to get Pear Deck up and running because I know some people prefer text-based instructions as opposed to the live demonstration you'll see today. And then we do offer um, also a link to get a special extension they have. Um, this is only needed if you have slide decks where you're trying to, where you've told Google to have your items in your slide deck come in one at a time. You'll see that in a minute. You'll see an example. And so the extension makes that work in Pear Deck because normally if you put those what are called animations into your Google Slides and then try to run it in Pear Deck, Pear Deck doesn't see the animations anymore and everything just shows up all at once. Um, there's this secondary extension is for those teachers who use animations because you'll, you'll put your slides in the extension version of Pear Deck so that your animations work. Um, the webinar recording is listed as coming soon because I forgot to record the, the webinar we did earlier this week, so I'm recording this one. Um, and then I provided some additional um, help and even the slide deck that you'll see me using in just a minute, I have linked in here for you because it has a lot of screenshots that you might find helpful. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to present this lesson in full screen. So this is just Google Slides. I've just put pictures from Pear Deck in it. But um, as we go here, so these are interactive slide presentations from a tool called Pear Deck. It is a Google Slides add-on. It has that special extension I told you about for your fancier Google Slide decks. And it also is a Chrome app. So there's a lot of ways to get it. Um, it adds interactive features to Google Slides, including questions that students can type answers to, questions where students can drag um, a dot to show what their answer is, and questions where students can draw on the slide. So we're actually, that was quick, we're gonna actually stop this presentation. I'm gonna launch an actual Pear Deck activity right now. And so for everybody in the room, what's going to happen is that when I launch this activity, you're, if you would like to try a live demonstration of Pear Deck the way your students would see it, you'll actually need to go ahead and keep your Zoom window open so you can still hear me. And you, if, you're, if you know how to have two windows open at the same time, you can even kind of push Zoom off to the side so you can still kind of see my screen. That way you can see the teacher side of, of Pear Deck. But go ahead and open up or, or reopen or click on your internet browser because I'm gonna actually send you a presentation with some activities that you're going to do as if you were the learners. If you're not comfortable trying to have two things open at once, you can actually just hang out here in Zoom and look at my screen and you'll be able to see what's happening um, without having to try to manipulate both screens. So for those of you who are comfortable having 
both Zoom and an internet page open, go ahead and open yourself up to a new kind of blank page on your internet browser. You should use Chrome for this, please. Um, it will work better. So that you have a place here at the top to type a new um, web address, okay? In order to participate in the activity. I am going to start Pear Deck, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to launch Pear Deck, which you don't have in your Google Slides necessarily, unless you've actually already opened it. Um, so Pear Deck is now open on the right-hand side of my screen, and I already have my slides ready to go, so I'm not going to insert any right now. Instead, what I'm going to do is click Start Lesson. Now, for those of you looking at both Zoom and your internet page wondering when I'm going to tell you what to do with your internet page, it is really important to know that for your Pear Deck lesson to work in a live setting or even student paced mode, which a lot of you will want now because of the distance learning situation, you can't press present on Google Slides like you normally would. You must open Pear Deck and then click Pear Deck's Start Lesson button, which is what I'm going to do now. And it's going to ask me if I'd like to do instructor paced, which means live in real time or student paced. And because you're all here with me, I'm going to choose instructor paced. And it's syncing up my presentation now and getting ready. While you are on, while it's getting ready, those of you who are on your internet browser and ready to try this activity, sorry, my mouse just, there it goes. Um, and try that to be, you're going to go up to the very, very top of your screen, not the Google search bar in the middle, but at the very top, and you're going to type join PD dot, oops, my presentation just opened in a new window, join PD dot com and just hit enter. And what will happen is it will say that it's um, waiting for a code. So you need the code from me. I'm going to give that to you now. Hold on a second. There we go. Your code is B like boy, H like Harry, O like ox, X like xylophone, and S like submarines. B, H, O, X, S. So students in your class, if they were in the classroom live with you, they would type that code here where it says enter code. B, H, O, X, S. And I have 38 students connected so far. So those of you who are looking in Zoom or who have both windows open, the teacher can see in the lower left corner how many of her students are connected. So out of the 64 people in the room, I currently have 40 who are connected. Remember- I have a wrong a letter because it says it couldn't find it the session. Can you try again for me? B, I do have 41 people in. So B like boy, H like highlighters, <laughs> O, X like xylophone, and S like submarines. Oh. Let's hope it was just a glitch. It and was the no, it was the last. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there we go. And um, if you are still trying to maybe think about joining, remember to open a new um, tab on your web browser and at the very, 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 very top, you're going to click type joinpd.com and then it will prompt you for this code, B-H-O-X-S. I see about 44 people connected so far. Okay, oh, hold on, I'm so sorry, but hold on one second, please. We actually have, we actually have to have a new refrigerator delivered and my dog's gonna go nuts, so I'm gonna bring him in with me. I'm gonna pause the recording here. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, so now we're going to try an activity. And just for fun, I decided to put in some questions that have some French. I was a French teacher before I um, came into this job. So the first question for you, for those of you who are connected and participating along with me, is there are no cognates between French and English, meaning no words that are basically the same, like the same spelling recognizable between French and English. If you think that's true, drag the dot that you'll find in the lower left corner of your screen, or no, click, I'm sorry, this is multiple choice. Um, click on the word vrai, which means true. If you think that that's false, click on the word faux, which means false. So there are no cognates between French and English, no words that are the same between French and English. If you think that's true, click vrai. If you think that's false, click faux. 
and what it's telling me, hold on one second, oops, sorry. I'm struggling because my screen changed and I can't get to my... So down on the bottom, it's telling me that 35, 36, 37 of 47 people have responded and it's giving me the option to show responses to everybody. I can also, sorry, go ahead. Okay. I can also lock your screens so that you can't respond anymore. I can shut the activity down and say, no, we're done responding with this one. We want to take a look at our responses. So I have 41 people responding. They're clicking either vrai if they think the sentence is true or faux if they think the sentence is false. Nicole? So let, yeah. Um, I wasn't able to click on the... Um on the two symbols on there. Instead, I um, had a button on the bottom right corner that said answer question. Oh. And then it took me to another page that made me choose true or false. Um, may I ask what device you're using? Uh, PC. Huh, okay. Just curious. I was wondering if it might make a difference like that. Okay, well, that's really good to know. So um, in some devices, I also knew that for some people it had just a, it just had kind of the, the vrai and faux or true and false appear as like two items almost in like a little tiny table and they could click on one of them. Let's see what we've got. We've got 45 people who've responded and I do see a couple of questions in the chat. I'm gonna to try to get back there in just a second. So now it's going to let me show the whole class, a bar graph of how many people said it was true and how many people said that that statement was false. <laughs> And right now, you might be wondering which answer is correct, but the answer that's correct is that the statement is false. There are actually many, many, many cognates. Um, almost all the words for politics and science and several of the arts all come to us from French. So we have the word art itself and biologie and politique and all those kinds of good words. That way. <laughs> Little French lesson. Um, let's try another activity because I want to show you a couple different styles of activities in Pear Deck. So when I change the slide, a new activity will show up on your screen as well. So now you are artiste. Hey, look, it's a cognate with English. Um, dessiner and triangle. Triangle is also a cognate with English. Dessiner means to draw. So you're being asked to draw on your slide. So artiste, dessiner and triangle. Thanks. And now we have 20 people have started drawing already because I can look at the bottom of my screen and I'm not sure why it's all grayed out. It usually isn't. So it's very hard for you to see. Um, but when I, when I had to pop out for a second to do something, it added this like very dark bar that wasn't there before. Um, so 40 of 48 people have started drawing. I don't know when they're done. It doesn't quite tell me when they're done. It just has that 44 people have started drawing, 45 have started drawing. It's okay, Lainey, just be quiet. Um, so, um, so at any point now I can click show responses. And as you can see, I can now scroll through and we can look at the different ways that various people drew their triangle. Come here. Come here. So we have a lot of different triangles. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, we have an animated, like a little cartoon triangle. Come here. Okay, I want you to lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Um, and then we have a smiley face triangle. And then people, you can experiment, right? So you can add different colors and start filling it in um, and so on. So your students have these tools. Now, this particular type of slide is and it's in real time. So if someone is editing their slide while they while you while they're drawing while you're looking at it, it will show up in real time. Um, so this tool is one of the ones that normally would not be available to you if you had the free version. I like how someone picked nice straight lines. They found some drawing tools and made some beautiful straight lines for their triangle, um, and then multiple triangles. Right? Oh, and one just went away. Um, and then, so you can take a look at all of these, right? Okay. So now let's take a look at one other activity. <laughs> I apologize. My dog's really upset. Um, this sentence is full of cognates, words that are the same between French and English. If je means I, if you agree with the sentence, je déteste le chocolat, you will drag your little blue dot over to the word agree. If you do not agree with that sentence, je déteste le chocolat, you will drag your dot over to disagree. 
And if you're somewhere in the middle, maybe it depends on what we mean by chocolate, um, you can actually put your dot anywhere on that range between agree and disagree. So you're going to drag your dot and it's telling me that 41 people have already done something with their dot. If I show responses, you will see that people can move their dots freely while we're looking at it. So as you can see, the dots can start, can move. <laughs> and this always leads to a lot of experimentation once you realize you can move the dots around while, while the teacher is showing them, right? So it looks like the majority of people disagree with the statement, je déteste le chocolat. We have some kind of in the middle and a couple of people who are like, yeah, no, I really don't like chocolate. So those are some examples of Pear Deck slides where students can interact. Um, the one that I didn't give you an example of, at least I don't think I did. Oh, maybe, we're not done yet. We'll see. You might have a typing one. Hold on. This one is also another example of using the icon that you're provided in order to tell the teacher something. In this case, it's kind of a gauge for me. So although you haven't learned how to use Pear Deck yet, um, if I had given a lesson on how to use Pear Deck and how you build your slides and add them, you could actually use this to tell me that you're good. It's okay if we keep going. If you're a little confused about how to build slides or stop, I need help. Given I haven't taught you how to do that, I would expect a whole lot of I'm confused and stop, I need help at this point because I actually haven't taught you anything. Um, <laughs> so if we look at show responses, um, it is, a, it is dots again, and then individuals can move their dots over to the statement that corresponds with their feeling at this particular moment. Nicole, you can have a quick click. question. Thank goodness, you don't have to drag. Oh, you can just click where, oh good, you can click on the area where you'd like your dot to live. Yeah. Nicole, I have a quick yes. question. Since we didn't put any usernames in when we logged in, are mm -hmm. you able to find out which student is an answering what, or would you just use no. this to guide your instruction during a lesson? No, at this point I would only use it to guide, and stu uh, guide my students, but I would encourage you if you're using it to remind your students to please sign in with their San Juan email addresses so that if you needed to, you could provide very targeted, to su targeted support to individual students who are struggling. So that when we look at the student paste version, I'll show you some screenshots of that in a little bit, you'll be able to see um, you know, who, who is on which slide and what they're answering. And if they identify themselves, you'll be able to help them. Otherwise it does just become information for you as you move forward with your instruction. Okay, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. That was a great question. All right, if at any point you want to hide responses, you can hide the responses. And I didn't do any of the typing slides, but there's actually a whole bunch of different kinds of templates where students would simply type on the slides, right? So, um, and I'll show you those templates in a minute. You'll see they, they don't just necessarily look like an open text box. There's a lot of opportunity and, and possibility with these slides. So I'm going to click end. We're going to end the Pear Deck portion of the presentation. And it's going to give me the option to publish what are called takeaways. Um, well, also, and to save the session so that I can find it and look at the responses later. Sorry about that. So for ending the, the session, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it my demo, demo session um, from, April, <laughs> from April 9th. And I went ahead and said it could publish student takeaways, but since you didn't give your names, none of you are going to get takeaways. But if you had signed in with your names, it would actually have sent you back an email with the slide deck, an area for notes, and then also whatever you typed or drew or wherever you placed your dot on your slides, you would get all of that back. So that not only can you as the teacher see what the students did, your students actually get a record back of what they did. So I do recommend you really ask your learners to please identify themselves um, and sign in using their San Juan accounts so that you can give them their takeaways as well as so that you can find and review the responses. So I'm going to hit save and end session. Okay, and it's going to find a link to the takeaways, um, which you could actually share directly to Google Classroom. Um, my understanding from this one is, um, I don't know, I can't remember now if it asks them to sign in so that they can get their personal takeaways or if it kind of gives them a generic takeaways deck that doesn't have everybody's answers in it, but does show what the Pear Deck slides 
the students participated in look like. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then if you clicked on Share to Google Classroom, it will actually prompt you to choose which classroom needs the um, thing. Do you want it to just be a resource like material? Do you want it to be an announcement or do you want to make it into an assignment? So you could say create material because it's really just a resource. And then you hit go. And then you give it a title. Um, I happen to like that the title they gave, but Hair Deck April 9th, I'll just put that up there. And then it says that they can download theirs, which tells me that they're going to be prompted to sign in and they can get their Pear Deck takeaways right from your Google Classroom, which is pretty fabulous. Um, if they go to Google Classroom, they can, they'll click on that and it will prompt them to sign in to get their personal takeaway slide deck. Okay, and then it will let you view your assignment, but that's of course in student, I mean in teacher mode. Um, so I posted new material. Sorry, I have to move my toolbar out of the way again. Go to classwork. Um, Pear Deck April 9th, and then download your Pear Deck takeaway. And in my case, it might recognize me and it might take me to my teacher one because um, it, it knows me and I'm signed into Google Classroom as the teacher. So it probably won't provide the student takeaway version. It's probably going to give me the teacher one. So we'll, so we'll come back to that in a little bit and see what it provides for us. Now we're going to return to Google Slides because I ended the presentation we're going to return to Google Slides. I'm going to put this back in present mode. And as you can see here, the slides are sitting here in my thumbnails. But for people who didn't participate in the Pear Deck session, they're just slides that you can look at. If they wanted to do these activities and they weren't participating in the Pear Deck, they would just have to do them on a sheet of paper or something just to try out the activities for themselves in practice. Um, so that they could also decide if what they thought about that sentence and so on. Shh, you're okay. All right. Let me go into the chat because there's been a couple of questions before I switch into the part of the presentation where we look at how easy it is to add these interactive slides right into your existing Google Docs pre or Google Slides presentation, or um, if you how I mean you could start a presentation from scratch using Pear Deck and add have these slides in combination with basic text slides. So let me go up into the chat. Sorry, I'm also trying to keep my dog a little calm because he hears the people outside and downstairs. Okay, um, sorry, I asked it to give me the chat, but it hid it from me. Hold on one second. Let me see where my chat is. Nope, still don't see it. Hold on, there it is. All right, so yes, it works. Is there, let me show you over here although I did turn this off, so I don't know how long, how much longer this will stay open. But there was a speaker view that kind of showed me what slide I'm on, and I can scroll through. These notes are actually in the speaker notes area. Pear Deck adds notes to tell you what each slide is designed to do. You can delete those if you want to replace them with your own notes for what you wanted to say on that slide. And then it gives me also a view of the students in the room and how they are responding when I choose to share responses. So this is what the what it opens for me as the teacher once I tell the um, students to go to the Pear Deck to go to the Pear Deck um, presentation that we prepared for them. All right, it's a good question. So let's go back in here and we're going to start looking at kind of the the logistics of getting this to happen. So. As I said, we're going to focus on how to do this with Google Slides because so many teachers will be using Google products. So one way to get it is using the add-on for Google Slides. Um, I gave you the link in the slide deck. The slide deck is in your resource document um, to go straight to the little add-on store for Google Slides to get the link. But you can try these steps first because we did ask the district to enable Pear Deck a while ago actually, district-wide, and it might already be sitting in your add-ons menu. I will show you where that is in just a second. So you can open your Google Slides, click on add-ons, and see if you already see Pear Deck there. Okay, and then if you don't, it says if you don't see Pear Deck, click get add-ons and then search for Pear Deck. So you would go to their little store, which is the same place I linked for you up at the top of the slide, and typically Pear Deck will show up, but if you don't see it, you can just use the search box to search for Pear Deck. I am not sure you will even have to search for it. I think it might be sitting here for you, but if it's not, 
you can go to get add-ons and quickly kind of pick it up and add it to your add-ons. And every add-on you've installed onto your slides will show up on every slide deck. You don't have to go look for it again. The next time you create a new slide deck, you don't have to go install it again. It's going to be here for you with every slide deck you create from now on. You'll notice also that one of the things Pear Deck seems to have added, and I just started seeing this happen this week, I think, or maybe at the end of last week, is Pear Deck now puts itself right inside your toolbar. I, I assume and I think that will happen for all of you. Um, so you could now just click Pear Deck in order to start it off to the right. So it's reloading because I clicked it again. <laughs> okay, the other place where you can get Pear Deck is from the app. It has a Google app as well. When you are in your Google Drive, which remember you access most easily by going to portal and clicking on the Google Drive tile, it'll have drive in the left corner, your big new button underneath that, your search drive, blah, 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 go all the way to the right to what's sometimes called the waffle, also called the rubrics cube. It's basically an app launcher. If you click that, apps. You can keep scrolling down and you might see the word more. Click that. There's even more apps and you can find Pear Deck in the Google, uh, in the app store for Google Drive as well. So there's a lot of ways to get this tool. Once you open Pear Deck, you might recognize this menu off to the side. Um, the present lesson button is there. I scrolled a bit down, but I wanted you to know that if you scroll down past the template slides, there's actually a help button for how Pear Deck works. So even after we leave here today, in addition to the resource document, you can also get help directly from the Pear Deck, sorry, directly from the Pear Deck little side menu by scrolling all the way to the bottom and clicking on how Pear Deck works, which will take you right to a help resource center. Okay, and I keep going back and forth between <laughs> presenting and not presenting. So the way that you add a Pear Deck slide is to choose the template that you want from the library. So I have my Google Slides open right now, okay? And now that I have my Google Slides open, um, you're going to go to the slide that you want the Pear Deck slide to appear after and click on it on the left-hand thumbnail menu so that there's kind of this golden rod box around it. Then you're going to hover over here. You're going to come on over here to Pear Deck and choose the slides you'd like. So let me talk you through their kind of three areas of slides. There's a really nice template library that I'll click on in a minute. Some ship slides that you can add, you can click on that. Or you can kind of have a blank slate of a slide where students will type an answer, a multiple choice slide, a slide where they'll provide numbers, push them a website right through your slide deck so it'll take them to the website you want them to go to, a slide where they will draw a response, and a slide where they will drag an item to indicate their response. So those are like a blank slate for you to create and we're going to look at their template library first. Their template library has a series of slides that they have designated as good slides for the beginning of a lesson and you can see what it's going to look like for your learners before you edit it. Every one of these slides is fully editable. So I'm going to slide through all of these first and then I'm going to pick one and show you what I mean by um, the fact that it's editable. Okay, so you can see if it's got a few beginning of lessons. I'm going to pick this one. If I click on it, remember over here on the left, I decided I wanted this new slide to appear after slide 11. So I clicked on slide 11 in my thumbnails which are those little mini pictures of slides off to the left. I click here and it goes, I'm working on it. Hold on a second. Let me build your slide for you. And it's going to add this new slide into my presentation. And in this case, this is a presentation I've already started working on. So I'm kind of inserting Pear Decks where I want them. Once you have the slide here, you'll notice that everything is editable. I can click on all of this and change what it says. I can also click on it and say, that's tiny. I don't like how tiny that is. I'm going to put it there um, so that when they see the Pear Deck slide, there will be a place for them to answer this question to tell me what the main takeaway was from their homework. It's okay. 
All right. The other thing is, is if you don't like the style of the numbers, you can change those. If you don't like, if you don't call things bell ringer and instead you call them warm up, you can click on that and change it. Um, if you want this box to be filled with yellow, you can make the box filled with yellow. Um, so these are really editable, except one thing. Never touch the area down here. You'll notice you can click on it and it's hard for you to see, but when you click, when I clicked on it, it put that box, it's like this box. It put that selection box that lets you drag it, make it bigger, delete it. Do not mess with this box on the bottom. That's where all the special little programming lives that makes this slide work. So leave that box alone. Don't mess with its size, don't delete it. You need that box to be there so that the programming part of it will work when it gets pushed out to your students to type on it. So that's that Pear Deck bar on the bottom. We're just gonna leave that alone. I can insert as many or as few Pear Deck slides as I want and they don't need to be all next to each other. They don't have to be all next to each other. So I can skip a couple of slides or even one slide and go back to my library here. <laughs> go back to my library. They have during lesson activities that you recognize some of these. This one is one that they'll type on, but it invites them to think about typing in a graphic organizer format as opposed to just lines. So they'll be able to start clicking anywhere on here to either type or draw. And you can, again, change what this says in the middle. You can change what this says on top. Um, just don't mess with that bottom area down there. So you have a lot of options. Now, another type of template that they have, if you scroll past the lesson builders for beginning, during, and end, go on down, you have critical thinking and social emotional learning slides. Go down further and you actually have ideas for content areas. You have some templates designed specifically for littles in our grades TK through two, for math, for science, for social studies, world languages, and English language arts. Now, you might consider kind of going out from your content area and looking at slides from other areas because you might see something in there you like and could adapt. So don't necessarily restrict yourself to going by content area, but if you go to world languages, for example, because I was a French teacher, um, you can pull in the matching items, which um, this could also work. They probably have a version of this for littles, but instead of words matching the pictures, it might have letters and which ones are the first, like this, the first sound of the word. So you can change how large the font sizes are for all of these, and your students can draw lines to match the citron vert, to the line. And if you don't like those pictures, you can switch out the pictures for different pictures and at which point you would definitely also want to switch out the words so that things match. But you can do all kinds of things with the slides that they've provided in the template area. Okay, so these slides are, and it's still working, there we go, these slides are provided as ideas, but in theory you could, for example, take out Spanish, replace it with you know, French in this case, and they could circle three places in the world where French is spoken. You could also make it 15 because there's like more than 30 of them. And even for Spanish, you could make it 15 and it would still work. Um, so you have all kinds of template slides there. And then you even have example questions from subject areas. So this one is kind of a fun one. I actually edited this one once for use in class. Um, this is where they actually help complete a diagram. So they are given a word bank and they label this diagram. So they have the words here and it doesn't really drag. So they can draw anywhere um, or I think they can type as well actually. And they can see word one and type it over here and see word two and type it for that correct you know, part of the B and so on. So that's just a quick orientation to the many, many kinds of slides that they have available. So, um, you know, even if you wanted to put in some of these social emotional learning slides, you know, what's filling your bucket today and what's draining your bucket today, um, they have these available. And if you work with students who speak other languages, you could change these slides 
um, to be in different languages if you have the language capacity to do so. Um, so let's go back to this part of the session and talk a little bit about the student paced mode because you saw the live version. But it's possible that for many of you, it's actually going to work better to do this as a student paced activity, especially because no one is actually is required to do live lessons or meetings with their students. So you can choose to do so, but it is not required. So if you wanted to, you could actually choose student paced activity when you click start lesson in Pear Deck, it will automatically bring up this screen and ask you, is everybody here with you live? That would be instructor paced. Or are students accessing this anytime they want to, the next time they're on a computer, that will be student paced. So you'll choose student paste. Um, copy the information to share with students if you're using, like there's a link up here, for example. If you're using something like Remind or Class Dojo or Seesaw, you'll grab the link and you'll share that with your students that way. If you're using Google Classroom, just click Share to Google Classroom. And make sure in the instructions for your assignment, you tell them to go to joinpd.com. Um, actually, you won't have to do that in Google Classroom. This is just a third option if, they, if you do want to use that join PD in the code. So you pick share to classroom. And once they share to classroom, you notice it makes you pick which classroom and which action. Is it an assignment? Is it material? What is it going to be? Then you edit it. Remember that Google Classroom thinks everything is worth 100 points, so you might want to change that. Um, but you fully edit your assignment, and then you can either assign it right at that moment, or you can click the pull down arrow to schedule it for later. And here's a little screen of what the students see. So you might remember that if you were looking at some of the slides from Pear Deck, it looked like there wasn't a lot of room to write. And this reminds me a little bit of what um, there was a gentleman earlier who said that for the multiple choice even, he had to click where it said answer here, and then he was able to see the multiple choice options. Um, so in one minute, write the most important thing you have taken away so far in today's webinar, which I, that's a slide I edited. Um, they aren't going to write it right here. Instead, they're going to type their answer over here to the right, and then I will be able to look at it. And as it turns out, I did some screenshots of the student paste mode and one of my anonymous attendees, the anonymous donkey, was on this slide right when I got there. So here's what happens as a teacher when you give out your student paste slides to students. If you happen to log in while they happen to be looking, you might see something like this. Um, off to the left will be your thumbnails. This is the main, this is the big, the first slide in my presentation over here on the right. And it's telling me, because I happened to be doing this live in order to grab these screenshots, um, 10 of my students are on this first slide. It has a little number 10, and it's telling me which students they are. Now remember, none of them had to log in. So because they didn't have to log in, they're all just ravens and rams and piranhas and so on. The next slide has two people on it. The next slide has three. If I moved, you can tell by the yellow that that's the slide I'm looking at. If I clicked on slide two, it would then pop up a list of which two students are on that slide. And then it would pop up a list of which three students are on the slide after that. And yes, it has your true false off to the right is what we usually saw, but it looks like um, for some users, the true they have to click on answer before they can see the true false. Okay. This also is nice, even if it's not in real time. Anytime someone has responded, right? So six people have responded to this. They might have responded last night, and I'm just looking at it today. It tells me who the six people were that responded that this question was false. So this is another case where since your students will access it from Google Classroom, most of you, they will probably already be logged in. But in the event that they're is an option for them to do it without logging in. You may want to be really clear with your students that you want them to go ahead and log in with their student accounts um, so that you can be sure to give them their feedback. Even with the dots, if I hover over any dot, it will tell me which student put the dot there. So the student, uh, the teacher view of the student paste actually tells me which students when well that students have answered the slide and it allows me to know which students provided which answers um, in this case i'm looking at toucan's drawing 
of the triangle from yes, this is from earlier in the week. So, um, oh, the student on that, sorry, that's not correct, excuse me. The students, uh, the student on that slide over there is the toucan. And let me see, I think, there we go. Um, 14 out of 20 students. I thought that I saw somewhere on this slide who the student was, but I can't see the name right now. Oops. Okay, let me close that. There we go. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is way at the bottom. Hold on, let me let my Google Slides bar go away again. All the way at the bottom of the screen, it is the owl who made the drawing of that triangle. So you can tell even on these very individual slides where you'll get like a different slide for each student, it will tell you which student did every single drawing. Okay, Oops. okay. all right, let's check our time. Yep, we have about eight minutes. So the Powered Up extension for Chrome. Let me tell you what that is for those of you who are kind of new to this whole idea of extensions. So Pear Deck is like a little mini program for Google Slides, right? It has a, it's like its own little mini baby program that works inside of Google Slides. An extension is a little mini program that works inside of Chrome. So up in the upper right hand corner of my screen, and it's gonna be tiny, and there's no way for me to make this part of the screen bigger, um, at the top, there's the URL or the web address. If I go to the right, there's a search kind of function, or is, oh, there's a little bit of a zoom, but it's not going to, yeah, it doesn't make the other part bigger, unfortunately. Hold on a second, I'm undoing my zoom, and it has a little bit of a delay. Okay, um, it doesn't make this part bigger. So there's a zoom, there's a bookmarks bar. And then there's these funny little icons, which I know are small on your screen. They're even smaller on your screen than they are on my screen, and they're pretty small. Um, every one of these icons is what's called an extension that I have installed in Google Chrome to do work for me. For example, this first one is Screencastify to do my screen recordings when I want to make a video. Uh, the next one is called One Tab, so it'll take all my open tabs and collapse them into a list for me if I need to restart my computer so that I can just click on that list and reopen all my tabs after I restart my computer. So in any case, these are all extensions. Way off to the right, there's my Pear Deck Power Up. That extension, I'm going to do a thing right here for a second right now. If I, let me find the, the slide where I had animations. This slide has animations. I can tell that it has animations because of the symbol off to the left. If I go to start this lesson now using the normal start lesson in Pear Deck, these items will not come in one at a time. Instead, they will all show up at once, even though I asked it to do animations. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually copy a few slides, including a couple of Pear Deck slides. I'm going to select them on the left, and I like to use keyboard commands, but you can also go up to edit and copy, but I'm just going to use my keyboard to do control or command C. And I'm going to open my Pear Deck extension because the extension actually will let me put in animations. Um, embedded video will work. So if you have video in your slides, like if you want to embed a YouTube video, it will play if you design it using the extension rather than the add-on. So with the add-on, no animation, no embedded videos. Text and image, that's it. It will all show up at once, too, on each slide. If you instead launch the extension, and you could choose to use the extension every time and skip the add-on, click Create Lesson. It's going to open a new Google Slides file for me. And it's going to take a little second to do that. So I'm going to check the chat while, oh, here it goes. I did notice something came into the chat. And remember, you don't have to give me your name. You don't have to fill out a form. Um, we have a report from Zoom that will tell me who you are and how long you are in the room. So we're good to go for your attendance. So it's giving us a little guided how-to, which we already knew about how to select a slide and insert it. So I'm just going to click right here, control V. I'm going to let it think super hard. And look, it has entered my slides. It's the same ones. The only reason I did it here, and I'm going to give it a title, Lanius, no. Um, I'm going to give it a title, which will be my um, Pear Deck extension demo. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I had an animation on this slide and maybe on this slide I'm going to insert a YouTube video and if I play that in normal Pear Deck the video won't 
play. Okay, so I'm going to search YouTube because Google only likes YouTube because YouTube is a Google product. Okay, and I'm going to select and it's going to put a video in here. And this video, if I launch Play Deck, I mean Pear Deck, excuse me, if I now launch Pear Deck because I used the extension, the video will still play in the lesson when the students get to that slide. The animations will work so that when they click their mouse, it will show one thing at a time every time they click because I used the Pear Deck extension demo um, to build it. So after that point, believe it or not, it's actually the same. I'm going to turn on Pear Deck. I'm going to start my lesson. I'm going to choose student paste. I just had to launch it from the extension so that it has some funny little programming in the background that will actually allow um, that will actually allow the um, the tools to work. Okay, and that you can delete this slide after you know how to do it. Now, one thing I did notice. I'm going to try launching this again. Just want to see if it will. Nope. Hey, Nicole, while you're launching yeah. it, yeah. Um, I just, this is Jenny, um, I just noticed that um, because I signed in, I had my own Zoom account, yeah. I wasn't through San Juan, so I just went through San Juan Tech Services, and I now have the reports tab. Oh, good, okay. Yeah. So Perfect. I just wanted you to know, yeah. Thank you, that's, that's right, isn't that good news? That's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Awesome, you're welcome. All right, so that is, the extension is a slightly more advanced version, and you don't need it. If your, if your slides don't need the animation, and let me put this in present mode so that those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, because it sounds like I'm creating Pixar films or something, notice how now all it says is the title. In the, in the thumbnail, you actually saw there was a bunch of text. If I click my mouse or hit my left or down arrow, it will now show one thing at a time because I designed it that way. But the problem is if I launch it in Pear Deck, and I don't really want to start a new Pear Deck lesson right this second, but I could. If I launch it in Pear Deck, that feature that I purposefully built into my presentation doesn't work, and this whole slide shows up all at once. So if you don't need that feature, if you don't have a video playing in your slides, you don't have to worry about the extension, which is the, the one that you installed that you put into Chrome, and it's in your support document as well, actually. I'm going to make sure we have the support document back in the chat because a few people have entered since I last put it in there. Um, so that is in the support document. These slides are in the support document. So it has all those screenshots about how you get the help and how you, um, how you start your lesson. It has some of the demos, which I'll probably be taking out, but um, it has the screenshots of what it looks like for the teacher when you want to assign something and when you have students on student pace. So all of this is available to you in the support document. And we are just about at time. So, all right. The support document is back in the chat for you in case you missed it. Um, and yes, you can upload your PowerPoint to Drive. Let me give you the support document for Google Slides. It actually includes help on how to upload your PowerPoint into Google drive and convert it to google slides um, so that you can use it because a lot of people already have powerpoints and you can actually just bring them directly into google drive but then you need to take one more step to then open it as a uh, as a google slides file instead of powerpoint and when you do that you'll want to run through each slide and make sure it didn't push the images over some of your text and you just need to move them back around. So the last document I just put in the chat is different from the one I posted about two minutes ago. Um, this document is actually support for Google Slides in case you would like some additional support in building your slide decks. Okay, so you would now have two documents. Mm. I don't know. Um, it will keep the, okay, let me answer the first question first. So when you go to get the add on the messages, we couldn't find anything for your search. Um, Sonia, was that the Pear Deck add on or was it a different one? And then for Rob, you don't, you don't need to make a copy of the PowerPoint. You'll actually, you can almost see on my screen that I'm sharing. I demonstrated this a little bit ago to some, to a group of teachers 
the PowerPoint is still here. Um, and what's nice now is when it opens, I can do a couple of things. Um, when I open it, I can click on it and choose open with Google Slides. So it kept my original. And now I can make sure that it saves this one um, into, my, into my drive. It has that little PowerPoint extension, but it's now editable as slides. I can now wait till it finishes loading. It's not done loading yet, but when it's done loading, I can actually go in and get, um, and get my add-ons and so on. If it doesn't work, for example, if it doesn't bring up your opportunity to get add-ons, um, you're going to want to go to file and choose save as Google Slides. And the reason for that is, is it gave me this nice convenient little opening. It opened as Google Slides, but it's still saying it's PowerPoint. So now watch what happens. If I choose save as Google Slides and actually, no. Um, if I choose save as Google Slides, it's gonna open it yet again. So while it's opening, just notice the PowerPoint thing here and the one feature that was gone was the add-ons. There's no add-ons in the menu up here at the top because it's PowerPoint and not slides. It's just opening in slides for my convenience. Over here now, when this one opens, oh, there's my add-ons. There's Pear Deck, there's my regular add-ons menu. It doesn't have the funny little PowerPoint thing here. And now I have a choice because now in my Google Drive, I might have to refresh it, but now in my Google Drive, let's refresh it and see if I can get it to show up there. Um, I should have two versions. Yep, here's the Google Slides version. Here's the PowerPoint version. It's my choice if I still need to keep the PowerPoint version here or if I'm done with that version in my Google Drive and I can choose to delete that. But if I want, I can keep both. I have a Slides version and a PowerPoint version. The Google Slides version is the only one that will have access to Pear Deck within Google Drive. Pear Deck does have a sim the same add-on, actually exists for PowerPoint as well. Um, so when you go to Pear Deck, you can actually Google Pear Deck and then get the add-on for PowerPoint if you prefer, okay? So again, when you open up your slides and you chose open with, and you said open with Google Slides, it did, but it leaves that PowerPoint extension there for you as a reminder, and you need to go to file, save as Google Slides. Notice it's not actually overwriting it. It's not getting rid of it. It saved it as Google Slides by actually making another copy of it. And in my drive, I now have both Google Slides and PowerPoint versions. Okay. I am going to pause the recording. <laughs> so if you, if you have a slide where you've made this master slide and you want them to drag an item on the slide into a box that you've set in the background on the master slide, unfortunately, Pear Deck doesn't have a way for you to designate that. Even if you chose kind of their open-ended draggable and then like copied your whole master slide content into it, the only thing that a draggable slide can drag, and I'm just gonna open one of their draggables, if I can find one, uh, that's a draggable. The only thing their draggable slide can drag is a dot or multiple dots, but it has to be dots that Pear Deck programmed. We tried adding our own dots and putting them in the bottom. It didn't work. The dots okay. didn't have the programming and they can't be moved. So, okay, the so, old, so yeah, the only thing they could do is drag these dots. They don't yet have a feature where you could say, drag the objects into a different order or drag the objects into the box, or it doesn't seem to have that kind of functionality yet. Okay, so, that was my question. Yeah, so unfortunately, okay. I'm wondering if when you present it, I don't think, I think it locks down that slide too. I don't, like it, if you present it in Google Slides, they can access it by, you know, when they open it and they can drag things around. Right. But once you pull it into Pear Deck and hit start lesson, I think it locks down everything. I don't think you can really touch anything on the slides. It's not opening in Google Slides anymore where you have the toolbars and all of that stuff. So everything is pretty much locked down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was all a right. great question though. Okay. I kind of, that's a feature we should give them feedback on to like keep working on. Like provide, right. opt I bet we wouldn't be the first one. And if they're like any other company I know, 
<clears throat> they start making changes as they get more and more people requesting that same change. Right, so that would be say, the perfect feature. Yes, this is the perfect kind of tool. So they've clearly got smart programmers, right? So this is right, the perfect right. kind of tool where it's like, find a way to let them drag objects that are on a slide to another location. Right. Um, yeah, that would be cool. Awesome. Thank you so much.